Okay, everyone, you guys can go ahead and take a seat. Can you make this mic? Okay, um, we're going to go ahead and start the meeting. Um, we will be recording this meeting so our partners, EPA, can listen in to see how our community um, is getting information as well as um, answer any questions and have it recorded so people that didn't come to this meeting can listen into the meeting and, and kind of get those frequently asked questions and answers. All right. So without further ado, we have, like we said, refreshments in the back, the restrooms are in the back of the house if you haven't been here before. Um, does everybody, can everybody see the screen okay or do we need to turn down some more lights? Is that, we're all good? And can everybody hear me back there? Gary, can you hear me? Okay. So I am Brenda Yokepa Moses. I am the Deputy Director for the Department of Environmental Management. And more importantly, I'm your neighbor. In Pahala. So we're here on a series of meetings. Thank you for, I see a lot of familiar faces. I think this is the fourth time we've been meeting. Um, we want to go um, kind of skip some of the things that we've been doing in the other meetings, which is the definitions of different acronyms, the basic stuff. You guys are at level 300 now. You're not at 101 anymore. We're going to go right into the options and talk about specific questions that you may have. Um, in the next few days, you'll be seeing a survey being mailed to your home. That survey is the same survey that we have available here. So if you're ready to vote for whatever system you prefer, <clears throat> please do so tonight so we have them. Um, the surveys, we'd like to get as much input as we can from the community. So um, they're your neighbors that haven't voted or come to this meeting. We'll be reaching out to them. And if you see them, please let them know. It's important that they vote so we have a say. Um, and what kind of system comes in to Pahala. All right, so the agenda tonight is the purpose of this meeting, of course. Um, cesspool closures, milestones for Pahala. We're gonna be recapping the treatment alternatives that we talked about, um, feedback from different treatment alternative options with the preliminary engineering report. Um, we've made those preliminary engineering reports available online. It's a quite lengthy report. We also have um, issues at the public at the um, Pahala Library. You could check out, read, take it with you. Um, I told them if it goes missing, we'll replace it. It's not a big deal. It's about 166 pages, though, and not all of you may have access to a printer or want to sit in front of a computer to read that lengthy document. So please let us know if um, you need access to that and don't have a, access online or um, to the public, the public library. Um, overview of the environmental information document. So that's part of our process. Uh, we're a government agency, so we've got to jump out through a lot of hoops. And one of those to make sure that the envir environmental uh, part of this, this um, project is addressed. So through all these meetings that we've had, we've been basically starting our environmental document. We've been talking about the project. We've been talking about the scope of the project. We've been talking about the project area and how it will affect your individual homes. We're going to get more into depth like that, and we're, we also hired a third party contractor to get some of that information. They'll be reaching out to other agencies within the community to get their feedback as well. And then we'll go over the next steps, um, any questions or answers, and closing and the survey. Like I said, don't be pressured to fill out the survey tonight, but if you guys feel comfortable, please do so. Um, we need to get those surveys back so we can move forward with the next step. Okay, so we're gonna go with the general overview of the environmental information document. We'll refer to that as the EID. Sorry for all the acronyms, but there's a lot of long words in here. And we're seeking community members participation during this um, development of this EID. Allow community members the opportunity to provide additional feedback and or questions or different treatment alternative options described within the preliminary engineering report. Allow community members the opportunity to solicit oral or written comments. Members will be allowed to provide oral comments during, before, and after the meeting. So as we've already started the meeting, I think 
it would be more beneficial if we wait till we get through because it's a very short presentation tonight because we, like i said we've already laid down a lot of foundation so we will allow you guys to do it orally tonight to do it in front of everyone if you don't feel comfortable you can always do comments in written form believe me we read all of those my boss back there makes sure that i read every one of them and respond so comments and you can also reach out to us via email if you want to whichever you feel uh, comfortable with Okay, so our Pahala cesspool closure milestones. Um, we've been over this before, so you can kind of just throw them all up there. Um, at the end of the day, we're meeting all our milestones. We've been really pursuing um, Pahala to get this to the finish line. I'm a community member here. I feel your pain. We've been through this for many, many, many years. So I'm proud to say this administration has really pushed this to get, get some closure to this um AOC um and so we're on we're on track we're doing all that we can um the community input was important but like I said I didn't want to have too many meetings with you guys everybody's time is precious I wanted to make sure we have um, new information to present when we come to meetings and so our preliminary engineer report was the last meeting that we had in Alejo um and so this meeting is going to be getting some deeper questions on those options like I said some of you guys are already ready to vote told me when I see you at the grocery store and what, what option you want, and that's fine, whatever your preference is. But we do have our experts here tonight. We have we have EPI in the back of the house. They're the engineers that do the, the individual systems, the individual IWSs. We also have Ramsey Mansour, the director. He's got 40 plus years of engineering experiences. He's very well versed on wastewater, can answer any of your questions. Um, and then we have Sherry here from our, uh, Corporation Council. We try not to use Sherry because that means we're talking about lawsuits and things like that. But she is here. She can give you some legal clarity if that's what you're looking for. Of course, we have Peter Sir. You guys probably know him by now very well. He sends you out all the information and does a great job trying to get the community heads up on when the meetings are happening. We have Kelly, um, part of our team partner, and she is our environmental planner and she keeps us on track. She makes sure we meet all those deadlines. All right. So anyway, that's all. Um, the deadline is for we're shooting for July 2026 20, to be complete. So votes are important so we can start to move forward with whatever system you guys choose. Okay, so like we talked about before, option one is the centralized package plant with new sewer collection line. Most of you from this community understand that that collection line that's under the ground now is very old and most of you um, can witness that you've been calling in for repairs in the middle of the night and what have you. So um, this option one is the sewage treatment plant with a new collection line. It'll mean a disturbance in your community. All of these will, will be a little bit uncomfortable for all of our households for just a little while, but it's a temporary thing. We'll put it in and then it'll be good for hopefully a hundred years, right? All right, then option number two is, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, come on, Peter. No, oh. okay. Can you guys hear me now? If I don't touch. Hello. I just wanted to put it elevated. Okay. Peter, put me on. There we go. We need a, a woman's intuition here, innovative thinking. Bring it closer to my mouth here. Okay, how's that, Uncle Eddie? Good? Okay, do you want me to start from the start? <laughs> I'll talk to you after. Eddie knows the system better than any of us, so. Okay, so option number two is our centralized package plant with existing collection system. So basically the exact same thing we just talked about with option one, but we're gonna use the existing um, collection system. And we have really no idea what kind of condition that line is. So it would involve another step of evaluating that, okay? And three is the individual wastewater system county maintenance program. And this is the one that we talked about pretty in depth in every meeting because a lot of people were not familiar with IWS. So some people have asked us, well, you talked a lot about IWS, but not the sewage treatment plant. Most people are familiar with the sewage treatment plant, 
This is foreign to a lot of people. So we spent a lot of time going over what it is, how it impacts the lot and what have you. So this option number three is the individual wastewater system county maintenance program where the county will maintain this system. Um, and so as we talked about, it looks like it's a big footprint. It really is most of it's underground. You're talking about a cap that's left on top of the ground. Um, you won't be able to do permit infrastructure on top of that leach field that's under the ground, but you will be doing, we will be able to do some um, non-permanent things. You park your car there and heard, or you could do some non-permit um, things on that property. So it's not like you can't touch that property there. Okay, um, we have option 4A, individual wastewater system operating permit and, op and the individual wastewater system operating permit voucher system. So if, if the community decided to go IWS, um, there would be some options that we could have. The fastest option would be to do a voucher system where we say, okay, you can have, you go to your lot. It's gonna be different for each lot, right? There's gonna be challenges on each lot. Some of them will be expensive, some of them won't be that expensive. So whatever your lot costs, it'll be under a voucher. The county will issue a voucher that will pay that contractor. So you'll, you'll be managing your contract. It will need to be a licensed contractor, but you can go out to whatever contractor you want. You negotiate with them. It has to meet our specifications and they have to bring your property back to the way it was before because we want to make sure when they leave, you don't come back to the county and say, but this isn't fixed or they broke my rock wall. So all of that will need to be included in that um, proposal that the contractor does for you. And they'll issue a voucher, like I said, so it won't cost you anything. It'll be through the county. The other way is that the county is the one that procures the contract and, and handles it from step one to step Z. So. Okay, um, so we have um, the feedback for the wastewater treatment options. That blue form is the surveys. Like I said, it'll be, it was mailed out to you as well. I had Peter wait because I didn't want you guys to get it before the meeting and then be confused about, didn't have to come to the meeting because the surveys are there. Why did you be sure you come to the meeting? Because we do have, like I said, our resources here. If you have any questions, this is the time to ask. We're here to help you. Ramsey drove all the way from Kona, so I know he's going to be tired tonight, but if you guys give him stimulated questions, it's going to awake his brain. So feel free to use the resources we have at the back of the room, especially EPI as well. They're experts on the IWS, so we can answer your questions as well. And for your neighbors, like I said, for the people that aren't here, if you see them and talk to them, tell them that surveys form is important, that they could um, fill it out. And maybe, is Julia Neal in the house? Julia? I mean, if maybe if they don't want to mail it in or what have you, maybe they could drop it off somewhere in Paula. We can coordinate that. Um, and so, or I could just can drop it by the house if you want to, but not after eight o'clock. Um, but anyway, so that is the first part of this meeting. And this is what we've been talking about since we've been coming out to the communities, the different options and what have you. This is a different, this is something that we're adding on to this meeting. And this is the environmental document that we need to do. County, I mean, government agencies have to do a lot of steps. And one of them is to make sure that we reach out to the communities to make sure that they have input on things that are happening within their community. And this EID, which we're gonna use as an acronym, um, like I said, we've hired a third party consultant to do that and he will be collecting information. Um, and you guys can also do the same thing, call us, write us, email us with any information or concerns you have or any, community organizations that you think that might need to be included in the consultation of this project. Okay. So these are the things that EID will do. It will describe the proposed project alternatives, the project need, existing surrounding land users. And that's what we've been trying to do at each and every meeting, right? We've been talking about the scope. We've been talking about where this project's happening, who the, who the persons that will be affected. So we've been laying that foundation from day one in these community meetings. So they're just going to use that information that you've been, we've been providing to the community and build on that. Okay, and then the consultation, like I said, besides our people that are on the AOC and the, the, the ones that um, are actually on the gang cesspool, we'll be reaching out and consulting with state and federal agencies as well. 
um, to see if they have any input for it to go into this EID for our community. Okay, the environmental topics to be covered in the EID are as follows. And there's a list of things, water resources, climate, flora and fauna, energy, air quality, noise, all of those things they'll be evaluating. And this document will be available for the community as well when it's, it's completed, but these are all the things that will be evaluated. Okay, and how the community can participate. Um, Affected property owners receiving consultation letters provide feedback during the request to response time, during consultation. Um, other community members can also go to our website. Um, and just if you guys have any assist, you guys think of anybody, OKK or other groups that are in this community that need to be notified, we pretty much, I think I pretty much have a good handle on those, but you guys can always um, let us know. Are we still good, Uncle Eddie, with the sound? You can still hear me? Oh, now, now you can hear me. You cannot be not paying attention, Uncle Eddie. <laughs> now you got to pay attention and listen, Uncle. Okay. Um, and so the next steps, and Gary, did you want to wait or do you want to, do you have a question right now? Wait until after. Okay, I'll get you. Um, so our next steps for Pahala, of course, we're going to do the EID consultation outreach. Um, the county will be continue to prepare the draft EID and we'll make that available for individual talk story sessions if you guys choose. Um, most of you guys are probably done with these meetings. I think you guys are ready to move forward with some results, I'm pretty sure. But this is the time we're getting to a, the stretch, the closing stretch. So please give us those feedbacks. This is the time to do that. Future meetings, notices will be mailed. Is everybody getting your meeting notices in enough time to be at these meetings? And everybody's doing okay with that? Okay, I think we're being, we've been on top of that. Um, thank you, Julia. Julia posted on her blog and she's very good about the Kulu calendar. We appreciate her. And of course, anytime you guys want to, you can go to our website. Um, anybody that hasn't been to this meetings, your relatives, your neighbors, please refer them to that website. They can watch and listen to the recordings from prior meetings. Okay, so your input is very valuable. Um, we have, we left this back part of the meeting open to, for you guys to ask questions in front of the group or you can ask questions at the back of the house after the meeting, whichever you choose. But I think we'll go ahead and start with Gary. No? Oh, Gary, don't be shy now. Okay, let's see, do we have anybody? Uh, Julia, yes, come up to the mic, please. So it's being recorded and we wanna make sure everybody has a chance and opportunity to listen. Is that on? Uh, just push the button. Just push the button, Julia. Just for clarification, I was wondering, um, what is the impact on choosing either the sewer system or the IOC on the um, ability of people to add on to their houses in the future or to build on condos, given that they have large enough lots in the zoning? Is the IOC only going to be for the size of the house it is right now? But if you want to build a house for grandma or young couple and baby and their lot, because housing so hard to come by now, there would be a big demand for that, I would think. Right. I mean, I think we have all the lot sizes that are under the AOC. None of them are large, so maybe a few of those homes. But yeah, there definitely will be some restrictions. We, we can ask for variances, but there definitely will be some restrictions on permanent infrastructure going on top of the IWS that's currently there. Um, and Rams, I don't know if there's any restrictions on how many bedrooms can be hooked up to the IWS. Yeah, I think it depends on the size of your lot, because to get a building permit with a planning for any addition, Here. Um, it requires that uh, you have to have a certain size to be able to add additional uh, <clears throat> dwelling. So right, we call it EDU. Right. Well, yeah, that's. 
and out, but how about for the future? Because people, it's the each time if you die of thing and you design a link to the options that are existing now for the person later add on, but then you're using for the same IOC that's being provided at the time, for example. Well, currently, I think, um, yeah, you could answer that because you did some feasibility uh, for the existing lot sizes. And I think we're going to design it based on either five uh, bedroom um, units uh, or less, right? Yeah, we can design for five units. So, DOH allow you to design for five bedrooms. And that's the match. So that's what you folks will do for each lot? Yes. Okay. Uh, you know, depending on the current situation. I guess it's going to be site specific, lot specific. So maybe some people have only two bedroom house, but they have a larger lot, right. then we could design it for five bedrooms. So, so that's it's going to be based more on the lot size. <coughs> yes. So there's Capacity going to the Right, mm -hmm. on the site. Because I think we identify a handful of the lots are under 10,000 square foot. 10, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000. Yeah, so mm -hmm. some of them is kind of our perspective. But the we larger lot, lot, yes. I mean, you can pick the lot. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so it's going to be based on the lot size and the future capacity of that lot for uh, how, how up to five bedrooms. Up to five bedrooms. Okay. Okay. Let's um, let someone else have a chance to ask a question, and then Julie, if you have any more, you can just come back. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions? I just wanted to make sure that um, I didn't know if the pros and cons for each option last time was presented. Yeah. So if you guys still have any question about the four options that were presented, uh, please ask. You know, because each option has its own benefit and disadvantage, advantage and disadvantage. So, and this is the time where we would like to get your involvement and, you know, um, commitment to be part of the process as well. So, Thanks, Gary. Hello. Okay, my name is Gary Tomando. Um, I am on the gang, so I live in Baba. All right. Uh, my first question is clarity and stuff. Um, last meeting last month, I believe was, <clears throat> I asked about the EPA giving us leeway because doing this project, the, um, the thing was going to exceed over the timeline that was supposed to be done by 2026. If we was to choose a specific option that uh, I'm going to mention after this. So Gary, we did, uh, we do have legal counsel corporation here. We did bring that to the attention of EPA um, that if in fact the community chooses the sewage treatment plan option one that has a collection system, it may in fact go over our deadline just because supply and demand, right? We're gonna have to wait for a sewage treatment plant or package plant for the mainland. We don't know how long that's going to take. And so um, they are cognizant of that. And I believe that they're um, going to be working in good faith with us as long as we keep moving forward. So we keep moving forward. We come to a hurdle. We'll bring it to their attention and we'll tell them, hey, um, we've ordered everything. We've done everything. There's no there's no nothing that we're doing on this end to stall the project. Um, we can't force a contractor to accept our bid. We can't have a treatment plant sent over to us any faster if it's not available. So they understand that. So I think they they are very uh, understanding about that. So thank you. And they did hear your comment on the last meeting. So okay, thank you so, so much. They did. They did. They did. Mm -hmm. uh, next thing is, uh, you know, if, like option one, 
uh, as a new sewer line system that you guys are gonna put in front of our homes on the roads or whatever it has to be. Um, say my neighbor across the street of me, I know we're all on the gang, but say like up the main street on Kikaki, uh, some of them are not connected. They have uh, cesspools. I know if the thing passes their property, they have to join in, right? Is, are they going to be paying also because um, I heard that they're not supposed to. Yeah, so that's one thing that we changed uh, coming into this administration because, as you know, in prior meetings, people were voting different ways because it was apples and oranges. Some people didn't have to pay, some people had to pay. So, everybody that's been included in this AOC process, the people that are on the gang cesspool, as well as those homes that, if they if the sewage treatment plant were to run in front of their home, they would be mandated to hook up. That would be covered by the county. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, not, not a question on that. It's, you know, you're gonna hook up to the county. When the lines run past the house, um, going back like 18 years, we had asked the question, when the line passes the house and you've got to hook up from the house to the county line on the road, will the county be catching that bill because at that time, they were saying, okay, if the thing is uh, once got to hook up, the homeowners have to pay that. Right. It's my understanding that we're going to be hooking up to the houses that are included in this AOC, we're going to be hooking up to the house. On both sides? Yeah. So that way, because we have to close that. The main thing is we have to meet this milestone. We have to close the gang cesspool. So if we have people that are just refusing not to pay and not to hook up, then we can't close the gang cesspool, right? And, and those things. So we're going to make those homes that we've sent out notices to, um, they're going to be whole on this project. Okay. Uh, and I'll we'll get some more questions going by so I can come back up later. But anyway, the thing is this. Um, I was looking at these options, and when you said last month at the meeting, you know, I mean, to use the existing line is pretty stupid because I know below my place, every time I see the guys come and try to dig up the lines because it's, it's cracking, roots going in and blocking up everything. But I'm looking, you know, I look at a, a permanent fix where uh, the only option I see that I would love to have is option one because is more of a permanent fix. Because if we ever was, something was to happen where we uh, expand this community, you know, and we gotta get on the sewage treatment plan, it just so happened we have uh, your own individual in your yard, right? Um, what do you call it, septic tanks. And then these guys make this uh, plant and do them. We would have to end up hooking up and we're gonna end up paying. So I'm looking at more of a permanent fix. That's what I'm looking at. Right. And this community is very rural. And we looked at back 20 years and like what has happened in 20 years as far as the increase in population or housing. And I guess we've been blessed maybe that our community has stayed right. small. And I think that's how we like it. But we never know what's going to happen in the future. So your point is valid and it's well taken. Okay. Yes. Um, the last, uh, I guess. This sewage treatment plant that you guys are going to put it down in a magna area, would it be big enough for the entire community? Uh, uh, so, I mean, there is there is potential to add on another yeah, train okay. in the future. Yeah, for sure. And like like I said, we got away from the lagoons, which was a big eyesore and big football fields being deep excavation, very small footprint that will be irrigating magna trees. It's, it's a very um, small footprint for the community. So, yeah. Well, anyway. Um, you and uh, your administration, 18 years too. And I'm kind of happy that you guys pick in charge of this situation. Wow. Thank you, Gary. Okay, um, we are here for answering questions. If you don't feel comfortable in front of the crowd, we'll be in the back of the house like we were in Nalehu. We had a great conversation in Nalehu. A lot of people asking very good questions, but if you guys have any questions now, you can ask it in front of the group or we can, we can um, pause the meeting and, and have our um, people resources in the back of the room to help you look at the maps or answer any questions to, to get you through the survey. Do we have any alibi questions at this time? Okay, so like I said, I'm gonna turn off the mic, but we'll be here, um, Ramsey, don't let him sneak out. I know he has a long drive, but he's right there. He's the guy with all of the expertise. So if you have a question, please, um, ask him. We have Mark Grant here. He's a project coordinator for this project. Been very amazing, getting us, keeping us on track. 
Um, and then of course, Sherry in the back of the house and EPI as well. Okay, so let's turn on the lights and let's get to looking at the match, ask some questions. If you are ready to vote on your survey, I'll put the survey box up there. It's one per property. So if you, your husband and wife live in the same property, T and K, it'll just be one vote. But some of you have multiple homes, you can vote for each property. Okay, thank you.